All right, going to do a video here on this Gene Kim guy. Uh, became aware of this this morning. Um, Brother Jeremy Carter uh, brought out a video about Gene Kim um, showing that he teaches this Catholic Trinity thing. And some of the stuff he says in this video I want to be going through here is just downright her heretical. I mean, terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, just unreal. Um, and, you know, I heard about this guy a while back, and I thought, you know, First of all, I went on and I saw BBC Interna International. I thought I was a British broadcasting channel, you know, and I thought, oh, okay, this is kind of odd. Why would they have this guy on or whatever talking about the Bible or something? Um, so yeah, I don't like the fact of using a worldly thing, BBC. You know, I know Bible Baptist Church, but it's their church is not called Bible Baptist Church International. So I think that there's, you know, I mean, you can clearly see, look at the titles of the guys' videos. You can clearly see it's a lot of the clickbait type titles and things and a lot of the wild titles and everything else, which is kind of funny. I remember Peter Ruckman actually teaching the one time. He said, I teach my young men that when you go out of here, you don't you don't major on minor type of things on the on the kind of weird sideline type of stuff. Um, you know, I I could find the clip I'm I'm sure I I have it someplace, either one of the old cassette tapes or whatever else. But he said, you know, you don't you don't build your your church on the green men from Mars or something, you know. You stick with the Bible. You preach the Bible, and you let the Lord increase your ministry. So he's not even following the the what Ruckman taught, um, you know, whatever. And I think he's doing it because I think he's monetized. I actually did a video. It's unlisted, but I'll show you the thing here. I'm not going to play it here for sake of time. Uh, I want to keep things moving here, but you can see here, let me maximize this so you can see this. He has 6,741 subscribers here, and within a matter of minutes, I clicked on another video. This is within just minutes. It's the same day. He went from 6,000-something subscribers to 9.3 thousand within a matter of minutes, and I thought, huh? And I went over here to his actual channel. And yet, yeah, 9,411 subscribers from 6,741 subscribers within minutes. Now, that doesn't happen. Uh, you don't get, you know, what, over 2,000 subscribers, um, you know, within a few minutes. You're going to have 2,000 Bible-believing Christians from around the world all of a sudden just, oh, wow, and there they are, you know almost 3,000 subscribers and by the end of the video um, yeah within just doing the video just a few minutes it's up to 9,427 subscribers I mean just and I saw these numbers going up and up and up and this is a year ago and all of a sudden you know he's up over what 49,000 subscribers now hmm and my caption underneath this thing I said uh, or then the description thing, I says, I don't like the looks of this. It seems like Robert Breaker the second. Yeah. Yeah. They're monetizing, they're, they're puffing their channels up, which is really kind of odd. But I'm going to play this video, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debunk this thing from the scriptures. Absolutely absurd what he says in here. Just ridiculous. Let's continue here. I'll play the video. All right. Next question. Hi, past. Okay, so you see there, you know, went to Berkeley and PBI, Pensacola Bible Institute, um, San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Then why are you saying it? BBC International. Whatever. <laughs> I never heard that before. That's an abbreviation for pastor. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Hi, past. Can you do uh, Just a little side note thing. Uh, we, I went over this thing years ago with brethren and things. Uh, there's no term... Uh, there's only one time that the word pastor is used in the King James Bible, and it's not given as a title. So you shouldn't be taking the, the name title. And it's ironic because one of the graduates of Pensacola Bible Institute actually wrote to me and told me that. Because I was using, you know, we're talking about pastor this or pastor that, and he said, you shouldn't be using that term, brother. He said the Bible does not teach pastor as a title. So it's actually one of the graduates, the graduates of PBI that corrected me on the issue of pastor as a title. Kind of weird, but let's continue.
A little teaching about modalism. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a doctrine which contradicts Trinity. Thanks. All right, so I'm not sure if you heard of this doctrine, but surprisingly, there's, there are people out there who believe this, and it is kind of common. We <laughs> surprisingly? And of course, you know, modalism is a thing that says that Jesus is, you know, just one, one, and then he has different modes of operation. So it's not body, soul, and spirit as the Godhead. No, it's just Jesus, and he just can ship, shape shift into different things and whatever else. Uh, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that we are made in the image of God in Jesus, Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, um, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right? So we'll be getting into more of that as we continue here. But he has studied this issue, so he's not ignorant. He can't claim, oh, I didn't ever heard any of these arguments. He studied it. And if he studied under Peter Ruckman, then he's heard the truth of what Ruckman has taught. Let's continue. We had one of these. We, I met two of these guys, actually, uh, who tried to get into our church. So I'm surprised that we get those kind of people. Okay, so let me explain. Modelism is actually, well, it's obvious, it's a heresy. All right? So modelism is a heresy that contradicts the Trinity. <laughs> modalism is a, it's modalism, by the way, too, but not modalism. But modalism is a heresy. We know that right away. Because it contradicts the Trinity. Well, maybe you ought to consider that the Trinity itself is a heresy. A Roman Catholic pagan, you know, three gods. Which you are not going to believe what he actually, he actually refers later on in the video, about seven minutes and ten seconds or so in, he actually quotes a verse from Deuteronomy that talks about lowercase g gods. And he says, this proves that there is more than one God within the Trinity. Stay tuned. Watch this. Why? Okay, now, Jehovah Witnesses, we do know that they do not believe in the Trinity, right? Now, modalism, they're the opposite of Jehovah Witnesses, but they do not believe in the Trinity. So, let me explain right here. In what way, Pastor? So, here's the Jehovah Witness, do not believe in Trinity, modalism, but they're not the same. Because here's the idea. They believe Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which Jehovah Witnesses do too. But Jehovah Witnesses see as one God, and then Jesus and the Holy Spirit as lesser beings, and the Holy Spirit some kind of energy force. But modalism, they take it this way. That there is that uh, one God, but the Father and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. In what way? Okay, so here's the idea, see. The idea is is that Jesus himself transforms himself into the Father and the Holy Spirit. See that? So they believe it's one God and one person. Jehovah Witnesses believe three different persons, one God and two lesser gods, or one lesser God and one's an energy force. What we believe in is three different persons yet one God. See that? So three different persons, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. We believe in three different persons. Well, then you believe what Roman Catholicism teaches. There's no basis in Scripture for it. No basis in the King James Bible for three persons. There's no, obviously the word Trinity is not in there. So why defend this name Trinity? That's very, very odd. But, you know, he ends up drawing the pagan Trichetra. I mean, Okay, let's continue. And then what? These three are all one God, see? Amen. That's what we teach and believe. So, this is their proof. That's what we teach and believe. Well, so does James White. This way. Isn't that interesting? Gene Kim's a Bible-believing Christian, but he's teaching the pagan trinity. And it's kind of funny, he's kind of careful not to join it too much down in here. Because then you'd see the trichetra. Hmm. Let's continue. Proof text is Matthew 28, 19 and Acts 8. But we're not going to turn there. But Matthew 28, which is a common verse, Go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to, uh, teach to all nations, baptizing them, 
but when you baptize them, it's not under names. It said, in the name of, singular, the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, no, actually it says Holy Ghost. And he'll, he'll keep doing this. He's saying Holy Spirit and he has written HG. It's kind of weird. Okay, how his speech doesn't line up with the King James Bible. It's, it's odd. But he said, let's not turn there. Well, why don't we turn there? Matthew, what did he say? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And by the way, let me just say this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And God says, said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So in the image of God, you know, he says our up here, our image. So there's obviously distinction there. It's not, you know, he didn't say our images, plural, because there's three different gods, but they're just one God, and three different persons, but there's, you know, nonsense. Um, it's so funny, too, because these Trinity people, they'll say, well, we believe in three persons, but you say, do you believe in three gods? No, just one God. Okay, so there are three separate persons, and each one has a title God, but they're somehow not three gods. It's weird. It's weird. Definitely not of, of the Lord. But there is distinction within the Godhead, certainly. All right? Body, soul, spirit. There's distinction there. They're not the same as far as a body is different than a soul, and a soul is different than a spirit, certainly. But they're all in one person. That's why the Bible never calls the Lord a you know persons, plural, but only person. There's four references to person in relation to the Godhead. All of them are singular. And Brother Philip Newton proved from the dictionary that person is a reference to a single being. But, you know, look at this. Let us make man in our image. Well, what does that mean? Our image. Body, soul, spirit. There's three. But it's a singular word. Image. You understand? In the image of God created he him. What is the image of God? A body that consists of body, soul, spirit. The outward flesh that you see right now on me, then inwardly there's a soul, and then the spirit. The spirit of life that's in me. It's easy to understand, but let's go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew chapter 28, I think that's what he said. Okay, it says here, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Okay, now, you know, you can make a big thing here and say, well, it has to be in the name of Jesus. You know, and things, and he actually quotes another verse of Scripture, and he never does answer this thing, um, talking about the book of Acts. But he, he does this, really twists things. It's, it's incredible. We'll continue watching here. But you see it there, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So it's not different names showing three separate persons. It's one person. That's their proof text. But when they combine that with Acts chapter 8 verse 16, Peter, when he baptized the Jews, the verse says, they baptized them only in the name of Jesus. Okay, what was that? Acts chapter 8. He said Acts chapter 8 verse 16 or something. What was it? Was it 16? Okay. It doesn't say they were baptized only in the name of Jesus. It says only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Now that's, what are you going to do with that? All right. Uh, baptize them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost. And then here in Acts chapter 8, verse 16, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, was that a false baptism then? Hmm. It's a good point that those people made. You know, 
and Jesus only people are still false okay that's the whole thing there they're false because they get into the thing of there there is no distinction between father and Jesus the son and the Holy Ghost there's no distinction oh yes there is that's how you get into the other verses where it talks about Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the father body and soul are separated you know at death our bodies and souls are separated so you know now the Lord can be separated in things that God had can separate between body soul and spirit certainly they can separate but you know we can't quite do that but uh, the, the whole point is that's how the thing works out it's really not that difficult to figure out again it takes a lot of scripture comparing scripture with scripture which these Trinity people don't like to do I mean the fact that they're going in saying I believe in the Trinity there is no such thing as the Trinity in the entire Bible the word Trinity does not exist and when you actually look into the thing they say you know the three persons and the God the Son God the Father God the Holy Spirit you know and you get in all this Trinity stuff from the Catholic Church it's a philosophical pagan idol is what it is but let's continue so they're saying this what's the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit and then with Acts 8 they'll say it's Jesus see that so it is Jesus the only person who is Father Son and Holy Spirit that's what they teach and that is actually heresy that is heresy oh. that is heresy that is heresy why why you didn't prove anything so it would have been heresy then according to you 816 only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus then that would have been heresy so he's not dealing with the text there he's not dealing with Acts chapter 8 verse 16 somebody baptizes someone in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus they follow Acts chapter 8 verse 16 to the letter well then that's heresy you papist okay so let me just simply explain first of all it's very it's not as difficult as you think it does sound difficult but here's the key the key is it's not difficult what do you mean it's it does sound difficult uh, well if you're a, a Catholic Trinity believer and teacher then yeah it makes a problem for your little system there doesn't it and so he has to go to all this he makes this huge thing this this trying to twist the scriptures watch this 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 you know what this is it's an English phrase <laughs> aren't they all you gotta realize this first the phrase in the name of okay what that is in the name of does not mean a literal name of one person <laughs> does it uh, it does not mean in the name of one literal person what are you kidding me it's insane you know why because it is an English phrase that is used as a figurative expression of authority mm -hmm. like you've heard people say in the name of the king right yeah. so they say those lines as a figurative expression of authority see that yeah. as authority that's uh, see all this stuff that he's saying here is him trying to explain away the scriptures all these Catholic Trinity people do that every single one of these stinking rotten heretics they'll all do that they cannot handle the scriptures you show them something that contradicts their Catholic little Trinity thing of their three pagan gods and they say well you, you see here and they'll go into these big descriptions and yet he couldn't even handle the text baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost over in Acts chapter 8 where you see it being put into practice he baptizes them in the name of the Lord Jesus continue that's what it's used for in fact I mean you can look up in the dictionary if you don't believe me if you look up in the name of that phrase or even just name what you're gonna find out is that dictionary.com defines it as by the authority of yeah. by the authority of it's not referring to literally one name of one person <laughs> so again you just go around and you just look for a dictionary definition that proves what you're trying to prove and then you say what dictionary.com you know please that's not what it means so let's for example we talk about you know let me give two examples in the name of love stop fighting you heard those yeah. hippies saying stuff like that right so it's not referring see to a name of a person see that 
So it's referring as a... The context of the scriptures is talking about a person, the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost. And Peter puts it into practice in Acts chapter 8. What are you doing? Bringing hippie things in the name of love into the whole thing. Deceit. A figurative expression of authority. In the name of love, stop fighting. Or in the opposite way, in the name of our country, go fight. Mm -hmm. See that? But secondly, the second one is even more stronger. Have you ever heard of this English phrase before or no? This is abnormal, is it not? They don't say, in the names of something, something. They don't do that. Yeah. It's in the name of, see that? That's the common figurative English phrase they use. That's why Matthew 28, it says, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know why? Because in the names of is so odd. In fact, look up every verse in the Bible. You won't find one anywhere where it says, in the names of. Not I mean, you just create stuff out of thin air. You just, I'm just going to make stuff up in that and just go off on a tangent because I can't handle the text. I'm proving my point. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is idiocy. Deal with the scriptures, kid. Not one, not one at all. That kind of English phrase. You know why? Because this is a common English phrase that they use. That's why they put this as singular. That's the reason why. So in the name of that phrase, it can refer to more than one person or thing. Didn't you know that? You might go, no, that's not true. Yeah, it is. Let me repeat the two previous examples that I used in the name. I said in the name of love, stop fighting, right? But didn't you hear people saying stuff like this? In the name of love and peace, stop fighting. See that more than one, but they use as singular name. How about this one? I mentioned before, in the name of our country, go fight, right? But what about this? In the name of God and country, go fight. See that? So you see more than one right here. But that expression, name, is used as a singular term. Singular term. In fact, the Bible even proves to you that in the name of can refer to more than one. First one was Matthew 28, 19, but look at the second time it's mentioned. And guess what? It's not just one God. It's even more than one God. Ooh, boy. You ready for this? You ready for this stinking little heretic? It's like a little devil here, doesn't he? Doesn't look like his face looks like the Joker or something. You know, more than one God. Yeah, he's actually going to teach you more than one God. Oh, yeah. He worships more than one God. Now, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. But, you know, he's not dealing with Acts chapter 8, verse 16. You see? Throws all this other smokescreen stuff in your face to get you confused. And then he says, okay, let me show you some other verses. Why don't you deal with Acts chapter 8, verse 16 there, heretic? He's not doing it. I know these people. I know, I know deceivers. I've been dealing with this stuff for many, many years now. All right? I've seen it over and over and over again. Dealing with Anderson over the years. Dealing with all these different liars and deceivers. Here's another one. They you, you quarrel them on the scriptures, and they will. You get a scripture, and they'll just throw a bunch of other weird arguments at you that that confuse you, and then you go. Then they go. See, look over here. Let's go to another place. What what about the verse I just gave you? Oh yeah. Well, I've already answered that. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I mean, question: Was the baptism that Peter performed in Acts chapter eight, verse sixteen? Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, was it a legitimate baptism? Yes or no? He didn't say baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Was it legitimate baptism? Any of you Trinity people can answer that. But uh, watch this. Watch this. He actually teaches more than one God. And he, he actually refers to pagan gods. Watch this. Look at Deuteronomy 18 if you don't believe me. Deuteronomy 18. We're going to look at verse 20. Deuteronomy 18 verse 20. Oh, if you say that, then there are three separate gods. Jesus, Holy Spirit, and the Father. Well, hey, look at this one right here. Look at... Did you get that? Did you get that? He actually just said 
you say that there are three separate gods. Well, hey, look at this verse right here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I agree with him on this point. So what are you talking about? Trinity. The Trinity is three pagan gods. So they would be lowercase g. He is actually giving a real scripture for the Trinity. Right here. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20. I'll read it to you. It says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, plural, even that prophet shall die. If you're speaking in the name of the Trinity, you're Trinitarian, you are speaking in the name of other gods. If you have more than one God, you have your three God Trinity, you are speaking in the name of other gods. So he's actually giving a real good proof text for the Trinity. And I find it ironic too, it says about here, the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, they say that they're a Christian, they say that they worship God, which I have not commanded him to speak. All right. Robert Breaker, perfect example. Oh, he's given these prophecies of, of, you know, September 23rd, 2015, makes a lot of money off of it. Then September 23rd, 2017, makes a lot more money off of it. Just common suckers. These guys are, they're, they're liars. They're deceivers. Papists. But let's check this out. Listen to what he says. He actually teaches that this right here, I mean, look at that. Lowercase g. That's not referring to God, the Father. Watch this. Deuteronomy 18, huh? Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we're going to look at verse 20. What did the Bible say? But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have commanded him, uh, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. See that? See, look at scripture with scripture. Amen. Don't just pick and choose one verse and they'll automatically make up an interpretation. Look at that. More than one person. More than one. Did you get that? More than one person. It doesn't say that in the text. You're a liar. You dirty, stinking liar. And watch what he says. And let's make it wor worse. More than one God. Yep. So this verse, Matthew 28, 19, that you want to use, if you're of modelism, there, there's a group, they're, they're called Oneness Pentecostals, and another group is called the Jesus Only Group. Jesus Only, all right? I met two of those guys. One guy who's a Jesus Only guy caused a ruckus in our church, all right? So I met those guys. So those guys, if they're going to use Matthew 28 on you to prove only one God, it's only one God, show them Deuteronomy 18, and you'll spoil them. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. So you got to watch out for this one God teaching. Yeah, you know, show them Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 28, or verse 20 there, because there's other gods. He's admitting to be a, being a pagan. <laughs> Unreal. Let's continue. You show them, you know, that's not really good to prove one God, because you're going to look at Deuteronomy 18, it can refer to more than one God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, these people are so stupid. You know, these Catholic Trinity people, they, you know, they can refer to more than one God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about all the scriptures that say there is only one God? So he's denying that there's one God. He worships three gods. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> Unreal. Continue. See that? Yeah, I saw that already. Right. But also look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Look, there is undeniably, undeniably, it's a fact that Jesus, Father, and Spirit, they are separate persons. Separate persons. It's a fact. It's a fact that Jesus, the Father, are separate persons. It's a fact. Okay, why don't you give us some scripture? And what he attempts to do here, again, you're seeing separation of body, soul, spirit. All right? It's not three distinct persons showing up. Continue. All you have to do is act 
like a Jehovah Witness. That's all you have to do. When you act like a Jehovah Witness and pull up verses that they use to prove that Jesus is not God the Father, proving separate persons, how does modelism attack the Jehovah Witness then? See that? They can't successfully fight back against a Jehovah Witness. But a Bible... What, what are you talking about? You know? So you have to believe in the Catholic Trinity to, to correctly fight a Jehovah's Witness. Well, that's brilliant. Wow. So to be a, a to, to to fight Jehovah's Witnesses, I have to become a Catholic. Man, how deep! Yeah, it is getting rather deep in here, isn't it? I mean, uh, no, you fight Jehovah's Witnesses by saying actually uh, Jesus Christ is God. God was manifest in the flesh. In Him, in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Talk about fighting Jehovah's Witnesses, you know. A little idiot boy here. Uh, how does a modalist, you know, which I'm not even a modalist, you know, whatever. How does a, you know, I'll say it this, you know, well, he says, how does a modalist fight a Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> it's better to be a Catholic Trinity believer. Continue. A believing Christian who believes in the Trinity can successfully attack a Jehovah Witness. Bible believing Christian that believes in the Trinity. There's no such thing. Trinity is not a Bible word. The Trinity concept is a pagan Catholic teaching. And even modelism. But if you're modelism, you can't attack a Jehovah Witness. It's hard. Because you're <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. You know, it's, it's hard. <laughs> oh, brother. It gets so ridiculous sometimes. It's just funny. Let's continue. Here's one verse, for example, that can really prove it. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Look at this. You think that it's just one Jesus, and Jesus himself transforms to Father and Spirit? No, they're three separate persons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no. You see, he's using this. This is false. This whole modalism type of thing. One God in three different modes. No, it's one God in three parts. Okay, and I know some brainiac uh, Trinity person is going to say, where does it say three parts? Where's the three parts? Okay, whatever you want to call it. All right. I know you people are brain dead and you have to try to spell everything out for you people and whatever else. But the whole point is God made man in his own image. Singular. All right. In his image, not in his images of the three different, you know, whatever. Let us make man in our image. One. Okay, one image there, but it's composed of three parts, body, soul, spirit. I have a body, soul, spirit. I mean, I realize that people don't understand that because they're lost. The Holy Spirit's not in them, so they don't get it. They just think you can just tell it over and over and over to them, and they don't get it. But, you know, this, this text proves the, the three separate persons. We'll see about that. Verse 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, so there's the sun, right, Jesus? And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw who? The Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. See, Spirit separately, and the Father separately. Verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, the Father. See, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? Uh, well, body, soul, and spirit are separate. They can separate, okay? At, at death, your body, soul, and spirit are separate. All right, you, know, you understand that? You understand? Probably not. Get saved and then you will. When I gave that verse to that oneness guy, he could not answer that one. All he could do was what? Like every cult... Cultic person, just repeat Matthew 28 and Acts 8. Matthew 28 and Acts 8. That's their life verse. Their life verse. But not only that, uh, look at Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. Here's a good one. This is problematic. This one, you're going to make a heyday with them on that. Look at Ephesians 1. Now, we didn't look at other verses. There are so many verses that prove Jesus is separate from the Father and the Holy Spirit. There are so many verses that prove that Jesus is separate from the Holy Spirit and the, and the Father. Um, well, okay, as I've said before, body, soul, and spirit can separate. I mean, again, people, think about it. 
think for a minute. Just, you know, tell the devils in the back of your mind, if you're a Catholic Trinity person, tell the devils in the back of your mind just to be quiet for a minute. Maybe some of this truth can get through to you. So maybe you'll get saved, you know. Um, when you die, your body goes in the ground. Your soul goes up to be with the Lord. They're separate. You understand that? And your spirit leaves you. Called giving up the ghost in the Bible. Okay? Body, soul, and spirit can separate. Now, that's difficult, but you know, like I said, you get saved and you'll get it. But let's continue. Yet they are one God. First John one uh first John five seven. He just said that yet they are one God, and yet he gave you the verses in Deuteronomy there that talk about or the verse in Deuteronomy there that talks about God's plural, and he said, So what are you gonna do with that? You know? Which one is it? You see the double tongue of the liar? It's multiple gods over here, but then we gotta prove one god over here. Seven, a popular verse. Three that bear witness in heaven. See? So separate things. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But these three, the verse says, and these three are what? One. One God. That proves Trinity, see, undoubtedly. <laughs> it proves Trinity. Okay, where's the scripture at? To say Trinity. I know it doesn't prove Trinity, it proves the Godhead. All right. And the three separate parts there are not persons. They are three separate parts. Body, soul, spirit. And Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and 59 also proves it. Proves it. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. See, separate persons. But... Uh, where does the text say separate persons? It doesn't. It doesn't say that. Body, soul, spirit. Stephen calls Jesus God. Calling upon God, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. See, thus proving different persons, yet one and the same God. It but you said earlier that there are three different gods. Different persons, there's no scripture for that. Don't keep repeating things that have no basis in scripture. Yet but one God. But yet earlier you said that there's three gods. If oneness and Jesus only believers claim that the real name of God, so I don't know if you heard this, they'll say the real name of God is Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they're going to say. They harp on this so much. A guy that came to our church, he brought a sign that says that. He brought a whole sign just to teach me on that. Why? Because this is the name. Because they'll say, they'll keep repeating this because this is the Father, this is the Son, and this is the Holy Spirit. That's what they're going to say. But look at this one. This is going to... So if they, if they think this is God's real name, look at... Show them Ephesians 1.17. You're going to flip their lid. That the God... Ooh, God... Ephesians 1.17, I think he said here. Okay. There you see it. Let's see if I'll just let him play, say this. And then. Out of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Oops. They're not the same right here. These are separate people right here. Why? Because right here, Lord Jesus... Uh, they're not separate people. Again, for the eight millionth time, you see distinction in the Godhead. Body, soul, spirit. They're not separate people. Prove one verse of scripture that says they are separate people, separate persons. It's nowhere to be found in the scriptures. You have to add to it like Catholics do. Jesus Christ is referring to the Son, and then God here is referring to the Father. Because keep reading. What did it say? The Father of glory, right? That's what that verse said? See that? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It sounds like a chihuahua that just breathe in some helium um, you know that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory God the Father obviously the soul I don't understand why these people don't get that may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the Saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. See? Distinction there. Amen. Yes, uh, the soul is distinct from the body. Yes. Uh-huh. 
Sure, but you see there's a big problem right here, which I talked about in my study, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. In context, who's it talking about? The Father of glory. He raised Christ from the dead. And yet I showed the scripture where Jesus says, you know, um, I will raise it up. I think is how it says it. Um, yeah. Uh, John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. No, 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 no. Because you see, oops, excuse me. It says here, um, when he raised him from the dead, the Father of glory, the Father of glory raised him from the dead. No, Jesus says, I will raise it up. It's kind of weird. No, they're one and the same, right? The same being composed of the three parts that you see in Scripture. Body, soul, spirit. So when Jesus refers to God being separate from him, he's referring to the soul. He is Jesus is the body, God is the soul, and the Spirit is obviously the Holy Ghost. It's so simple. It's so simple. I don't get it. Let's continue. Well, I do get it. They're lost. That's, you know, the whole thing. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. This is not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No, just show them Ephesians 1.17. Oops. Some got looks like I or they can believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is God, but I guess he has his own higher God to worship that you don't know about. So this is not your real God. Uh, isn't that what you just said? Isn't that what you just said? <laughs> Again, contradicting himself. Or they can believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is God, but he ha but, but, you know he has his own separate higher God to worship. That's what you just said. That's what you just said. And this thing of Lord Jesus Christ and Lord is Father, Jesus is Son, Christ is Holy Spirit. Again, I've not heard that, you know, but whatever. God, looks like the real God you should be worshiping is someone else. But if you're a Trinity, you got it solved. This is a Father, this is a Son. Simple as that. All right, so modelism is a heresy. Avoid it. Avoid people who says Jesus only, Jesus only, if you hear that. And oneness Pentecostals. They're heretics. <sighs> Unreal. So, and there's other stuff that this guy's done and said and whatever else. I mean, he, he's, he's a fraud. All right, so, again, another Catholic Trinity believer. Um, don't mess with the guy. All right? I mean, you can. I, mean, I always say don't mess with the guy. I'm just giving advice to new believers and things, whatever else. You're going to watch the guy. He's going to mess you up. And again, these, you know, see, here's, here's the thing. I need to say this, and that is um, I studied uh, Peter Ruckman's material for many, many, many years, uh, just as much as these guys have, Gene Kim and uh, Robert Breaker. I know Ruckman's material very, very well. I spent a lot of hours listening to him. I went to hear him preach the one time videos online. I met Dr. Ruckman in person. Um, I only got to spend a couple, you know, minutes with talking to him, and then he had to get going and things. He's obviously very busy and things, and I understand that now that I'm in ministry. But uh, I know about Ruckman, all right, and I've talked about Dr. Ruckman in a lot of my studies and things, and uh, I'll give Ruckman credit when I quote him. But what these two fakers do. They went and they studied under Ruckman, but they take his material, and then they're bringing out stuff, and younger viewers come along, they don't know about Peter Ruckman, and so they look at these guys, Gene Kim, Robert Breaker, and they think, wow, these guys really know the Bible. No, they really know Ruckman's material. That's the whole thing. They study, they took Ruckman's material, and then they bring it out as their own. You know, I could do that myself. I mean, I could take any one of these books back here. I got... I got lots and lots and lots of Ruckman's books. I could take those books and I could put a sermon outline together from Ruckman's material and I could come out and preach it and people go, wow, he's so good. He's so, he knows the Bible so well, you know? Well, thank you. Yes, you know, that's what these guys are doing. But yet when you see when they venture off on their own and they try to get into the Bible and do their own Bible study, they clearly show that the Holy Spirit's not in them.
they just bomb things and they just come out with all kinds of heresy and whatever else. That's the issue here. And you know, uh, Bible Baptist Church, Pensacola, Florida, the uh, Bible Baptist Bookstore, they copyright Ruckman's material. And I understand why. I understand that. But you know, they'll go after you if you put his stuff online. And you know, again, I understand. I understand that. I've struggled with some of that stuff myself because you put no copyright and then people are cutting it up and making it, you know, in all kinds of nonsense. Um, and so, you know, Ruckman stuff is copyrighted. It's hidden from the eyes of most people. But if it wasn't, and if you would actually spend the money and things and the time, and I know most people can't, but if you would, you would be shocked at how much of the Ruckman's material has been stolen by both Gene Kim and Robert Breaker. Bad. It's real bad. Uh, that's why I've always, you know, I, I tried to give both of these guys a chance. I really did. Uh, Gene Kim and Robert Breaker. Um, but they've both proven themselves to be false. And Gene Kim, uh, Brother Jeremy Carter brought out another thing. Gene Kim is saying that you can go into the time of Jacob's trouble and cut your hand off and you'll be fine if you took the mark of the beast. That is satanic heresy. The mark of the beast is three things. Receiving the mark and the name of the beast and worshiping him. All right? That's what it is. Um, it's an act not only of just, okay, you got the chip in you, but you are worshiping the beast and his image. Okay? You're, I should say it that way. You worship the beast and his image. Those are the three things. Worship the beast and his, and his image and take the mark. That's the thing. Uh, the number of his name is associated with the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter, chapter 13. But in Revelation chapter 14, it's the three things there. So it isn't, well, I just got the chip and I can just kind of cut my hand off and I'll be good. No, because for that system to work, you have to have been worshiping the beast all that time. So don't give me this thing of, well, you could do all that, and then at the end you can, you know, you kind of can have your cake and eat it too, you know. You can live in sin that whole time, and right at the end when the Lord's coming back to the judgment of the nations, you can quick chop your right hand off, and then, and then I made it into the millennial kingdom, yay, you know, or something. That is satanic heresy. So, um, whatever. Did my job exposing him, so that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.